Hello there and welcome back to the channel. This is Nerd World History and continuing my exploration of the various different Celtic tribes of ancient pre-Roman Britannia this week focusing on the Dabuni tribe. I know there's been a few breaks in my video upload content recently but it's mostly due to the fact that I'm extremely busy with work and a few other projects one of which is my new website which is linked in the description below if you want to check that out I have a blog on there and a few other things coming still in its infancy. But with that said, the Dabuni tribe of southern England. Let's check them out. Who were they? What were they? And what do we know about them? The Dabuni tribe are an interesting group. They were from the southwest part of Britain. Their territory bordered that of the Atrobartes, the Belgi, the Silures, and the Catavalloni. The exact origins of the tribe are a little vague, as is the meaning of their name, Dabuni, in and of itself. The in proto-Celtic languages, of which I'm not an expert, from my research, it may mean something along the lines of basically the coming together of two peoples. So they may be effectively a, a confederacy of two older groups that came together and became one. That's speculation, of course. Their territory included areas such as Somerset, although like many Celtic tribes their territorial borders did fluctuate over time and at certain times in their t history they would have controlled the area of the natural hot springs of the, uh, of the city, what is now the city of Bath. Although they didn't always control this area, but they were effectively in this area. They're known for the production and occupation of several large hill forts which overlooked uh, gorges and rivers and other such important areas of traverse in the local landscape. Their territory, as I said, did border that of the Catavalloni, who were a notoriously violent and powerful tribe in southern England, probably effectively the most powerful tribe in Britannia at the time, at least in the first century BC and in the first century AD. But they seem to have been on relatively good terms with them, with no evidence of any hostilities between the two, but this may have been because of their suspected origins. Several things about the Dabuni stand out as curious. For example, the oldest well, one of the oldest examples of a coin ever found in Britain was found from there, and it's from the 4th century BC. Now, I should note that the ancient Britons were not producing coins in this time period. They didn't start making coins until the 1st century BC. This coin was a Carthaginian coin, and it was found near Bath. Now, it would have belonged to whatever tribe was trading with the Carthaginians. It was likely minted in Sardinia by the Carthaginian colonies there, and they were doing trade with the Britons. And the coin, being you know a precious metal, would have found its way as a part of the trade and commerce of the time, and found its way all the way up there to the ancestors of the Dabuni. Now, one thing about the Dabuni that, again, does stand out, at least as a hypothetical for me as why they may have got along with the Catavalloni, there is speculation that the Dabuni were once subjugated by the Atrobartes tribe. Now remember the Atrobartes tribe were a Belgic tribe originally that emigrated into Britain and it, they displaced locals, so it's possible that the Dabuni, who may not have originally been called that, remember they were possibly the name possibly means the coming together of two, they could have been displaced and possibly subjugated at the same time by the Atrobartes tribe who came in and basically stole their land, but they later gained their independence, possibly under the rule of Tincormorus, but it is speculation. Now, the Catavalloni were enemies of the Atrobartes. Now, you can imagine my enemy's enemy is my friend, one tribe would ally with another tribe against a common enemy. Now, the Atrobartes did displace the Dabuni or enslave or conquer them. It's entirely plausible that the Catavalloni would have allied themselves with the Dabuni to basically upset the Atrobartes and create themselves a nice little ally in the process. As well as that, the Dabuni, as I said, they built many impressive hill forts, but they bordered two of the most warlike tribes in the whole of Britannia, the Silures, who I've done a video on previously, and the Catavalloni, who I still really need to do a video on because they're a huge tribe of a lot of political importance in the time period. Now, it should be stated that part of the evidence of this is before about 20-ish BC, they were using coins that would have been stamped by the Atrobartes, and then around this time they start to mint their own coins. These coins could be a sign of an independent Dabuni tribe. We also get start to hear rumblings of names coming out of the Dabuni, basically individuals who we now know the names of, such as one of their chieftains, uh, Corio, or King Corio is 
historically since we've known him, but he likely would have held the title of chieftain. Remember, chieftain being the old word in this in Celtic world for king. Now, I don't really know much about Corio. I'll be honest. I only learned about him myself while doing the research into this rather interesting tribe. To be fair, and I couldn't really find much on him. He basically we know about him from coins and vague references, but other than that, we don't know much. For he ruled from about 5 BC to about 25 AD, approximately. So he was before the Roman conquest, certainly, but he was known to them. So take with that what you will, whether he was pro or anti-Roman. Considering enemies of the Atrebates, allies of the Catavalloni, I'm going to go with he's either in the middle and neutral, or he was anti-Roman. Uh, it's also, again, notable that the Dabuni were not a Belgic tribe. Although there was certainly a lot of Belgic influence on their culture, they themselves were not a Belgic tribe, specifically like the Atrebates who had come here from the continent fleeing the Romans or whatever. They were a more natively grown tribe. So there we have the Dabuni. As I said, very interesting tribe overall. Ignore my dog. He's just roaming around. I recently redecorating and everything's moved in here, including his bed. Where was I? Yeah, they were a relatively interesting tribe from what I can learn. They, of course, were later subjugated by the Romans during the conquest. And in a sense, they've been lost to history with all the others. But we remember them here. And with that said... Like, share, subscribe, comment down below if you made it all the way to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.